Okay, perfect. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon your time zone. You have joined us uh, today in the opening ceremony of IEEE Women Engineering Project Based Learning School Camp that is going to happen from today till 27th November 2021 with an excited partnership with maximum of the IEEE Women Engineering, including Gujarat section, Madras section, UP section. Uh, we have Bombay section, Hyderabad section, Singapore section, Thailand section, and we Pune section. Uh, we have partners with the collaborators of IEEE Tri Engineering. That's a community that's an initiative under IEEE for STEM education and for reaching out to teachers, school teachers, parents, and students across the globe. We have IEEE SS12, one of our proud partner, and as a volunteer of ESS12 as well, it gives me more uh, immense pleasure to uh, introduce you all about ESS12 as well. Then we have SST Global and Japanese Plus. Those are new partners to us in IEEE VPBL camp. They will be giving they will be giving some sessions ahead in the agenda as you all have received the schedule as well. Um, we will be covering the agenda as well again in the upcoming slides. So let's get started by getting introduced uh, about IEEE Women Engineering uh, Affinity Group. So if you are new to IEEE, let me just let me explain you about IEEE first, because all of you are from school. And uh, unfortunately, it's it's my uh, dream in IEEE to give membership to pre-university students. But unfortunately, we don't have any membership for pre-university students and teachers as of now. Uh, IEEE is a world's largest technical professional organization. We actually use technology for the benefit of humanity. A lot of engineers, a lot of non-engineers, engineering background come together to innovate, to give a lot of great ideas, solutions to the society for the betterment of humanity. And we have volunteers like us all who are conducting this global camp for all of you as a part of pre-universities and schools. So what is IEEE Women Engineering? So this particular camp we started in April 2021. I will be covering the glimpses of first edition as well in the upcoming slide. Before that, let's understand about IEEE Women Engineering, what, what this actually affinity group is all about. It's a network of IEEE members and volunteers dedicated to promote women engineers and scientists and inspiring girls around the world to follow their academy. It's, but it's not limited to girls. We focus on diversity and inclusive plans very strongly. That's why we have uh, male candidates like me and many other uh, boys included in IEEE Women Engineering. It's not all about girls. So don't uh, confuse yourself that this camp is only for girls. Not at all. It's all for all, irrespective of their gender. IEEE, as I mentioned, is the world's largest technical professional organization. And our goal is to facilitate the recruitment and retention of women in technical disciplines. Again, not limited to women. We focus that in your pre-university level, in your grade 8, 9, 10th, 11, 12th, which, whichever grade you uh, belong to, it's about your passion and we help you out to achieve that, right? And the last, we envision a vibrant community. This is all about community, right? We, we all gathered on a single platform to learn from each other. You are learning something. We are also learning from all of you. Moving on to the camp's objective. So what we actually mean by like why we started this IEEE V project based learning school camp in April 2021 to build a school belt community under this camp to initiate the zeal of innovative mindset. Now, all of you as a student, as a pre university teacher or a parent, you actually need to see your students needs to see your children in the upcoming days in the upcoming industries as an innovative mindset right and we encourage you we help you out with those resources so that we can form a belt we can form a community where you can learn about it the second important thing it's not all about books we are not going to talk what is already in your books we are going to talk about project based learning camp it's all about the practical implication of cutting edge technology and how to how you can prepare yourself for the industries. And this particular camp focuses on that very strongly because this time in our second edition, the theme of our camp is share to care using project based learning. To foster the technological reach to primary secondary school level so has to make a budding student industry ready. Now, all of you may need to get into studies, right? You will get into colleges, then you will join a company or organization across the globe to do or some innovation. 
So we are here to help you out as an industrialist, as a volunteer, as an academician, as a professors from different great universities across the globe. We help. We are helping you out to get ready for industries. How to get those skills, those industrial skills, those presentation skills, those uh, writing content writing skills, to all in your pocket right away, virtually connected and for free. Last objective for our camp is to introduce project based learning approach. It's all about like the problems we see around us, right? COVID-19 is one of the big issue right now for all of us. And we are solving it by introducing vaccination for to our citizens of different countries. And there are a lot of examples, a lot of problem statement around us where you can implement technology, where you can have IoT, uh, blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and a lot of other technologies. And we are here to help you out how you can use it to implement practically using project-based learning approach. So these are the great, uh, I, I would say, these are the happy faces from our first uh, April 2021. We got around 130 plus registration across five plus countries. And uh, we were excited to share like this camp. The theme of this first edition was website development without coding. And you will be excited to note that the chief guest of today's uh, uh, inauguration ceremony, they bet me, Ramnik, if you made us learn about website development, the camp is successful. So that's the excitement that we had from all over the world, uh, from all over the IEEE as well as Atal, Atal Innovation Mission and other kind of organization which work for pre-university. And you can see in the center, there's one student working on a website that we gave our time. So this time also we have that. So uh, moving ahead, I would like to uh, give the mic to Rushali to take over and explain about the agenda of this camp. Rushali, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Ramnik. Uh, so once again, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening as per the time zone. Myself, Rushali Thakkar, uh, Secretary for IEEE PBL 2.0, second edition. So let me uh, give you some insight about what the camp agenda is. So the session uh, will be starting from tomorrow, that is 21st November. The talk is on the world of uh, content creation and its prominence. So that is given by uh, Ashok uh, Kanduri, and uh, he is the senior content reviewer for French at Amazon. The next uh, session is on Japanese for career success, which is given by Lalandi, and he's the uh, he is the manager strategic planning, Japanese plus SST Global. Uh, moving ahead uh, tw on 23rd November, you can see that there is another talk uh, held by uh, Bagisha Anand. Uh, she is a blogger and a sustainability enthusiast. And she will be giving a talk on the stepping zones of creative writing. Uh, the next uh, uh, in line is uh, the talk on leadership skills for 21st century that is given by Sinjini Sengupta and she's the founder of the Lighthouse. Then we have a project development phase and uh, as you can see on 26th November, you have a talk on an era of digital marketing and life towards sustainable development by Kamya Johar. She is an IT development senior associate in IT, uh, NTT data. And on 27th, we will be having a presentation round for the students and uh, the details will be shared in the upcoming days. So this was about the camp agenda. Okay, now uh, I am extremely honored to welcome our today's first chief guest, that is Bozena Pasik, who is IEEE fellow and mathematician at University of Kanas. We are grateful to her for accepting the schedule to grace today's inauguration ceremony. I would uh, like to like ma'am to take the uh, take the mic and enlighten us with her expertise and experience related to STEM education. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I was thinking uh, whether. Uh, <clears throat> I can share screen. Maybe I can show where I'm talking. I'm talking. Can you see there is darkness around me? I am talking from the heart of the United States. And let me check whether I can share because many of you I'm now I cannot share. So it's fine. I can I, I can talk. Now I can 
Oh, yes, okay. ma'am. I made you the presenter here. Uh, thank you so much. So just simply let me move that. Do you see my screen of Kansas? Uh, not yet, ma'am. Oh. Okay, sure. All right. And now you you should see. Yes, now we can see. Welcome to Kansas here. Yeah. Can you see? This is exactly, I am Bojana Pasik Duncan, and my accent is not Kansas accent because I grew up and fully educated in Poland. Poland is in Europe, and I'm sure you know geography very well. So now I move from Warsaw, from capital of Poland. I moved in 1984. I moved to Kansas. I didn't know almost anything about Kansas at the time when I moved, and I didn't know anything about education, American education. So you can see Kansas is, I always compare, the area of, the Kansas, of Kansas is almost identical with the area of the entire country, Poland. But the population of Poland is like 38 million, only in comparison to India, is 38 million. But population of Kansas is 2,900,000. So you can see on the same space, you can have 38 million versus two. So anyway, this is something I am surrounded on. Uh, next week, I will go to visit mountains. Next uh, state is Colorado. And I am at a wonderful university, which is, let me move. Can you see it's University of Kansas? Uh, we have uh, like um, about 28,000 students. You have 13 academic schools and many undergraduate fields. Maybe one day you will come to Kansas to study. And uh, <clears throat> of course, so many different programs. And this is how our beautiful campus looks like. And uh, it was founded in 1865. And only with 55 students in the first year graduating. Now we have uh, at least 6,000 graduating every year. So I am in that place and uh, I love the place. I could be, as everyone says, I could be everywhere, but I love University of Kansas because why? Because of students. Students are absolutely terrific people here and we do everything together. You've heard already beautiful introduction about IEEE, IEEE Women in Engineering. All those principles, we just carry on. And I wanted to tell you that, I wanted to bring to your attention that be open-minded, just simply Look what is, uh, I will show you immediately um, research that I am involved. I am involved in interdisciplinary research. So I am open for all kinds of activities in brain, learning dynamics of that. So my approach is, my approach is from system. Everything what I, or for example, you are now in the classroom, so you are my system. And I have to say that for doing that analysis of brain, for putting in practice, what, how can I learn about randomness in brain? You need probability, you need mathematical statistics, and you need to bring people in my research, I bring people from different areas, different fields, different um, disciplines. So it has to be mathematics, it has to be engineering, it has to be computer science, physics, biology, physiology, 
you can see how much, and I like to promote now that the science is the strongest when science works together. So you can see physics, chemistry, biology, physiology, all those are science and they have to work together. So, you know, making bridges between different fields is a challenge now, collaborating in learning and, you know, learning to collaborate and collaborating to learn is absolutely my mission now in. And you can see you will be in camp. What I professionally love to do, I established 30 years ago in Kansas, that beautiful program for students. So we continuously invite, uh, we have a long list of schools who want to come to our university because we bring to university in person. So now, of course, uh, we couldn't do that in person, but in April, we will bring them again, I hope. So you can see that we have to now focus on my teaching now is just the students. I teach mathematics for engineers. I teach probability, mathematical statistics, and my research is focused on systems and control you do control you will be driving a car soon is control very soon on the streets will be autonomous can, uh, uh, cars and you know so you have to know control you have some money and invest in risky and safe asset you have to know control and so on so is my research is and you can see you engage. I bring 30 years ago, I established competition, math competition. Can you imagine from third to 12th grades? From third to 12th grades, they come, they have only 40 minutes to solve five problems. If they will provide perfect solution only without justification why you receive how you re receive that answer they cannot win competition but so this way engagement but also you can see you already observe in this session we have all level we have professors we have uh, <clears throat> students and uh, of all levels so it's vertical learning and horizontal learning. When you learn from different fields, it's horizontal. When you learn from your uh, st college students, it's vertical. So I believe in putting together those teams, and I believe strongly in learning from each other in STEM. Why? It's already proven that STEM education takes graduates everywhere. Yesterday I had in class uh, my former student who was who had degree in mathematics, in engineering, and then economics and system and control, all those degrees, but he chose finance. And he spoke from perspective of a person who has that wonderful a background in education and is extremely successful in the work what you do. I already heard from Ramnik uh, passion. This is what is will be my major. Um, um, can you see? I consider classroom becomes a scientific laboratory. These days, the teaching is like scientific laboratory. So teaching is activity over time. And you know, you just simply, I wanted to finish almost by giving you feedback from students. So from former students, Mayo Clinic that you can see is one of the best uh, medical clinic in the United States. And my former student works over there using those math mathematical statistics uh, skills, using mathematics, but you can see what she emphasizes. The difference in her job 
is the necessity to handle large data sets. And this is what is the biggest challenge now. When I work on brain, I deal with huge, huge data. How you collect data, how you can prepare data putting into machine learning, and how you can prepare data is huge issue. If you will have data with outliers, huge outliers, and you will put all together in the box that will be working on your data will be like putting garbage in, garbage out. You have to know what you are doing and you have to always ask question, why, why I am doing that? What did that machine learning is doing to me? What is behind that? What kind of algorithm is behind that? That kind of question I'm sure will be addressed during this um, uh, camp and of course how to profess on the way you will learn invaluable things how to profess not only your learning but how to profess and in profess in professing we do teaching research and you will be doing project based because this is the best way of learning and I will, those are my tools. I am a mathematician who does applications to engineering, to broad uh, uh, spectrum of applications, but my tools are curiosity. If you are not curious, you cannot do anything. But creativity is these days absolutely fundamental because you are, next generation you are you will be creating new tools new methods new approaches new ideas and then connections connections from different areas of science from different engineering areas connection then communication and here is my message to teachers i changed dramatically my teaching uh, I force students to communicate well. So in other words, they have to nicely say what those results mean, interpret those results, interpret the theorem that you learn. And collaboration is what students love. And in this camp, you will learn how to collaborate and how to enjoy collaboration because this is the most beautiful thing. You are getting out of the box. You learn from others these exciting different tools you exchange and you are absolutely problem solver number one. So I wish you all the best and I wish you that you will learn absolutely from each other and just the most important, listen to each other. And just what, what the person said, like up, after today's session, I would ask you as I always ask my students at the end, what are your takes away? Did you learn something? And I, I will be open for questions because questions are the most important engaging. So thank you so much for giving me opportunity. I would like to wish you absolutely excitement because look, I feel so young because I learn every day and I learn from students. And this is what is the beauty, learning from each other. Thank you so much for giving me opportunity to talk to you. And if you would like to come to Kansas or visit, just let me know, connect with me, and you can easily find University of Kansas, my name, or you can Google, and you can find everything these days. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am, very much. It was really wonderful listening to you. Uh, I wish I would have been a student. I, I would have got an opportunity to study and learn math under you. It was really awesome, ma'am. Really awesome. And thank you. Um, yes, uh, it was. Thank you for sharing such valuable information on the power of learning in STEM and the most uh, C raised to five. That it was really very wonderful. Like, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Uh,
please accept a token of gratitude for being the special guest on behalf of IEEE PBL through our virtual momento. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, IEEE is part of me. So yeah, I belong to 10 societies. So IEEE and IEEE Women in Engineering is just the closest to my heart. Thank you so much. Now I'll hand over the session to Ramnik. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Ramnik. Yes, Ramnik. You are yeah, now audible. You're audible now. Oh, okay, perfect. I, I, I think there was some technical glitch. So let me remove my headphones. Okay, perfect. So uh, very much. Thank you so much, Bajana, ma'am. Uh, always it's a great honor and great blessing to us whenever you are available and uh, shower your blessings to us and your experience here with us. And I hope um, by your presentation and uh, addressing all the pre-university students, teachers and parents over the call, they will learn something new and they will get the full benefit of project-based learning through this camp. With that, proceeding ahead with the agenda, now I would like to invite my uh, mentor in IEEE, Dr. Ramalata Marimuttu, ma'am. She is a secretary and BOG member at IEEE Computer Society Global Team, and she, is a, she was a professor at Kumar Guru, uh, Kumar Guru uh, College of Engineering, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. With that, not taking much time, ma'am, over to you. Can I share my screen? Sure, ma'am. One second. Let me make you the presenter. Yes, ma'am. I guess uh, now you will be able to share the screen. Yeah. Yes. Is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. Please uh, go ahead and uh, open the full screen, then it would be more good, yeah. I am trying to. I, I guess it will. No, it's not working. Mm -hmm. You can check, you can, you can take it from uh, above M slideshow, go into the slideshow and there yeah. you can present it. Go into the slideshow option and present from beginning, yeah. Perfect. We can see it. Yeah. Please go ahead, ma'am. Okay. Great. Thank you. <coughs> First of all, I would like to um, thank everyone, uh, especially Bozanna, who opened the floor for me to uh, talk about the career sustainability. Uh, it is always inspiring to listen to uh, Bozanna. Uh, thank you, Bozanna, for being here, for, uh, um, for doing a great job of uh, warming up uh, the participants also to listen to me. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. uh, I would like to talk about career sustainability for the simple reason that I learned that career sustainability is something uh, that you have to cultivate in yourself by hard learning. I was the first woman to graduate in engineering from my community way back in 1985, when it was very hard for women to even being given education, education of any kind, uh, let alone an engineering education. So unless otherwise my father uh, had helped me, I wouldn't have become an, an engineer at all. He was the one who was uh, uh, supporting me from behind when I wanted to um, being educated. So I, I always think that I owe everything to him, his expectations and his dreams. Uh, because at that point of time, 
I didn't even have an idea that engineering is an option for me. And, uh, um, but he was adamant that I should go for a professional uh, course. And I'm talking about around 35 years back. And <clears throat> I am from a very rural background where the girls will be married off as soon as they complete their schooling. So it was a first for everyone in my community, in my town, and even for myself. But I learned, I learned every step of the way, and it was enjoyable just because of my outlook. So that's what I'm going to talk about uh, uh, today. So what is career? Is job a career? When I was talking about uh, uh, the career guidance to a pre-university student group, just like you, around uh, three months back, one of the students asked me, ma'am, when should I worry about having a career? And I was just thinking, oh my God, this girl has an idea that a career has to be thought about, planned, dreamt of, all these things. That is wonderful. And a job is not that. A job is something which we um, take for <clears throat> probably earning money or for some reasons for our financial independence, but it can be developed into a career, beautiful career. And more than the money, the maturity, the learning, the experience, and all these things towards focusing our dreams. That is what uh, is going to be our career all about. And this will take a lot of time for us to uh, build up. It might be like you might change different jobs, doesn't matter, And but you might have a focused career pathway and this career might not change. And as long as you have your dreams and whatever you focus on your job, um, whether it is temporary or permanent, whether it is paying enough or not, whether you are satisfied with your outcomes or not, whatever it is, if you are enjoying the, uh, the work that you are doing, it can be built up into a career, but it needs a lot of training, a lot of maturity, but we will learn it. As soon as uh, you land in a job, you will start realizing it. There are so many different career types. Of course, they start from a job. Uh, you can make it into a career according to your, uh, your uh, uh, enjoyability. I would say many of the people might be research-minded. They, uh, they might be uh, delving, into, uh, delving deep into things learning about it, going about uh, uh, finding a solution. So that is research. But some people might be interested in designing something, bringing out an outcome immediately, and that can be a design and development. But all these career types, what I'm talking about, it need not be a, a single uh, pathway uh, career it needs interdisciplinary skills. And these interdisciplinary skills can be developed only by attending workshops like this, because workshops like this actually take you to career sustainability. So what do you need to do if you want to sustain your career? Or first identify your career and then sustain it. Develop your skills. That is very, very basic, important thing that you need to do. And for developing your skills, what are all the skills that you need to develop? It might be educational, professional, social, but whatever it is, <clears throat> not everything can be your own skill. Uh, you might not be cut out to learn everything. It doesn't matter. Whatever comes to you best, whatever you like best, and whatever you are able to develop into uh, an expertise that is your skill but you will need uh, a little of everything the uh, technical skills you need when i say written and oral it can be verbal or non-verbal uh, verbal means it might be written and oral 
Non-verbal means it is the attitude, the body language, the behavior, how um, um, you teach the people, all these things come into it. And when you say professional skills, you need to learn smartly because the information right now is available in, um, in volumes and all those information might not be useful for everyone. So you need to have smart learning skills and updating them regularly. Then finally, social skills. We cannot be an island. Every one of us need a team of people around us, our family, friends, our colleagues. <clears throat> Apart from that, we might have some technical communities and other communities also, just like IEEE. IEEE is a technical community. It is a technical family, I would say, uh, for the people who really enjoy volunteering there. So that kind of uh, social uh, skills also are to be developed if you want to um, have um, a sustainable career for yourself. So developing your skills, the next thing is developing your attitude. You must always have a positive outlook of everything. Even if something brings you down, you should not be down always, you should bounce back. The speed of bouncing back actually is going to determine how you are going to react to the world. Then socialize, connect with people, find out if uh, that is going to be a useful connection, useful interaction, whether you are going to learn something from that person, whether you are going to teach something to that person, or simply enjoy being with that person. That socialization is essential. And most of all, be ethical in your dealings. Your attitude has to be always straight and transparent and ethical. This is very important in, um, in everything, not only the career sustainability, even livelihood sustainability, I would say. Now, let us see what a how a career is created. You might have heard about the famous saying, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. And teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Yes, that is giving skills. And I also picked up something um, like a joke. Give a man a few cats, he'll do nothing but fish for the rest of his life. See, now we have the career. But career sustainability, for that you need little more. Apart from feeding the cats, he also has to be trained to market the fish, make a career for himself. Then only the career sustainability will be available for him. So let us talk about the core skills that are uh, necessary. The first thing that comes to mind is communication because right now, every um, <clears throat> academy, every association, and uh, uh, even the government is concentrating on developing the communication skills. As I said, I'm from a rural background. And as I said, I was also interested in going for engineering. And I was uh, put in Anna University, which is a completely different platform, I would say. It, it is an international platform. When I was transformed or uh, uh, sorry, transferred from a rural background to this international background, just imagine how I would have actually um, lived, I would say, sustained. And that was because I was ready to learn. My communication at that time was, I couldn't even speak a, a complete sentence of English. I was only very well versed in my own mother tongue not English, but Anna University taught me because they put me in a room in the hostel where there were two more girls. One of them was from Malaysia and the other one was from Africa. Both of them could not even utter a single word in Tamil and they could not understand me. So naturally I learned. So that communication actually helped me in every step of the way because you don't stop learning just because you are uh, talking very well. It, it doesn't stop there. You need to still uh, continue learning. 
And the second one is the information handling. Information handling is something which you need to learn right now because as you know, you are handling the mobile uh, phones and other things, you know, the uh, social media, um, how much of information is flowing in. You should know how to uh, dedicate your uh, time only for a small amount of time uh, and find out which information will be very useful for, it, for you. Then the third one is the critical thinking. There are two different types of thinking, creative thinking and critical thinking. Creative thinking is someone um, uh, who is very much interested in design and development, um, innovation. They might uh, be developing their creative thinking skills, but critical thinking is necessary for everyone because you need to act smart in a particular situation. This critical thinking is the one which is going to support you, help you. You need to know when to talk, where to talk, and uh, answer or uh, respond on the uh, on the fly. Then multitasking. Sometimes multitasking is considered to be good. Sometimes it is considered to be bad. Both are important. You have to find out which situations warranty the use of uh, multitasking. So if you are going to do something uh, with thinking, the thinking skills can be cannot be divided much. So rather than uh, uh, going for a multitasking, you can uh, do it one at a time. Then interpersonal, team working, leadership and management, experience with real world problems, all these are important. And this experience with real world problems are the ones which are going to make you grow up. And as I see from the agenda of this PBL camp, I can see that you are um, right now equipped with uh, uh, some of the um, learnings on uh, French, Japanese, and project-based learning. So, how do we uh, how do we identify those opportunities of learning and developing the skills? This is one of uh, um, the international project competitions that. Uh, uh, we organize as a team, uh, Ramnik, myself, Bozanna, and so many people. And this is one of the opportunities for the people to develop skills. We have different uh, tracks here. One of them is for pre-university students, for the children from 12 years of age to 17 years of age. It's called a junior Einstein. And um, this is a prestigious international talent show where you will be tested for your innovativeness, for your uh, willingness to do it into a project and bring out uh, some outcomes. And it is also based on service learning, how your innovation, how your technical skills, how your uh, um, de uh, development of ideas are going to really be useful for some people in the community, because without that, there is no point in being an engineer. You have to communicate with the community. You have to find out what the requirements of the community are. You have to understand it properly. And then only you have to develop uh, your project. And this, this uh, uh, project-based learning uh, helps around uh, 500 to 600 people. In the finals, alone I'm talking about. Uh, in the uh, finals alone, it is helping some 500 to 600 people. And we touch around um, 20 to 30 countries. Uh, we also um, have a virtual um, track where people can uh, talk about their projects, present their projects virtually if you are not able to travel. But the idea is that you have to have a community background where you have taken the requirement from. So some of the outcomes I have just listed, how it is going to be useful. What is the point of conducting a, a, a conference or a, 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 or a project exhibition if it is not going to really um, help you with any of the takeaways? So here, um, there are some benefits for uh, the people who are winners, who are participants, and who are some volunteers also, like Microsoft training, the Japanese training, which you are going to get 
all these are part of uh, the ss12 also and these are some of the glimpses of uh, uh, our uh, previous editions we have been doing it for the past 6 years and i also published a paper on how this impacts the career sustainability of the students around 6 years back uh, <clears throat> i found that the career impact is more if it is a project based learning rather than uh, being a part of the service associations which are already there in the universities and finally my message to you is if you want to be brave then do something which scares you and it has to be repeated every day that's what i do and i know public speaking actually uh, scares you uh, scares some of us it was uh, scaring me at first but after that i learned i uh, i wanted to be brave and i did it similarly i would request that every one of you don't think that something uh, to learn is going to be um, finally bringing out uh, that to take away all these things are to be testing no it is not only testing it is for you to improve test comes but that is not the outcome that is only a step after that comes your outcome which is going to prove whether you are brave or not prove whether you are you are educated or not Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much, so much. Uh, Ramlata ma'am. It was really insightful presentation and the important aspects which we covered. Uh, the skills which are required for pre university students. It's very important and it's a happy news. It's good news for all of the students here on the call that we will be helping them to learn about this using project based learning. And they will be doing a lot of hands on and we will make random teams with each other from different states, different countries. And uh, you will be learning about presentation skills, communication skills and all other skills which are required for you to excel in the upcoming industries. Those uh, great uh, words, remarks and all the blessings man, which you always give to us. It's great support to us. And uh, I would say this camp was a. Uh, would wouldn't be here wouldn't be initiated and this is the second edition and i'm happy to share that uh, you help us out to uh, crop that particular seed uh, in april 2021 when we started the first edition thank you so much again for your advisory support and uh, always bless thank blessings you. To yeah with that i would like to uh, invite you to accept this uh, virtual token due to uh, virtual things it's really i i would be like blessed and honored if i would present this physically to you and I know. <laughs> this has have token of gratitude virtually thank you so time. much i accept thank you so much ma'am so with that let's smile and come on camera let's take a group pic and here's the end if there's any questions or something we have the whatsapp group so uh, all the students all the parents and teachers can ask any queries, any types of queries, and uh, we will be starting the exact sessions from tomorrow evening. Uh, tomorrow we have a session by Ashok, uh, who is one of my close friends in Amazon. Uh, so he will be talking about creative writing and uh, what the work he always do. So uh, tomorrow, 7 to 8 p.m. IST. So don't forget about it. We will share the link in the group as well and onto your email box as well. So go ahead, come on camera, let's take a quick group pick and let's capture your smiles out of this inauguration ceremony of 22nd edition. There you go. A lot of new faces. Amar Abdul, thank you so much. Hi Ashok, thank you so much. Hi Gitika. Hi Pragya. Great to see uh, the faces. Awesome. These, the, this is the motivation that gives us as a volunteer to kickstart these events with more excitement and with more en enthusiasm, because even if you belong to class 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, but as an industry, as an academician, as a professor, it gives us all great uh, honor to help you out to understand about important things, which really matters in the upcoming future for you all. Hi, Priyanshu. Hi, Sean. Oh, Sean, you are again. That's great. Sean is one of the uh, runner up, I believe, from our first edition. So a lot of participants are there from first edition as well, 20, uh, April 2021. Waiting for others to join. Come on, let's see. 
teachers parents please feel free to come on i hope uh, every one of you enjoyed the session and in the upcoming 6 days we have lot of lot of great sessions lined up for you lot of surprises lot of gifts virtual gifts so you will going to enjoy a lot so be tight with us be updated with the whatsapp group all the links will be shared there i hope uh, no one faced any issue while joining the webex perfect what about others volunteers i can't see volunteers if the team is not coming up how we can expect participant to come huh let's take one now uh, let me just capture the snipping tool just one second so on the count of 3 to 1 we can uh, have a big smile on your face and we can make b or w w would be good because it's b p b l camp so you can make w make w in this way everyone it's related to i triple women in j w the camp b stands for okay perfect let me set, just set a 5 second uh, this okay on the count of 5 4 3 2 1 perfect that's really nice of all of you that you joined us in the inauguration ceremony thank you so much again to bojana ma'am and ramlata ma'am and to all the volunteers party partners and collaborator speakers as well in the upcoming days who will be joining us and giving their talks uh, it's really great to have you all on to a single platform and it gives us an immense pleasure and honor to have you all for this camp the second edition and hopefully in the upcoming summer we will conduct the third edition as well if we have all the enthusiasm and excitement from all of you till the end of this second edition on 27th november perfect then a very good evening good morning good afternoon good day yes. bye bye take care thank you thank you have a nice day ahead bye thanks and have a very nice evening thank you thank you ma'am thank you everyone take care Thank you thank you Sean thank you Amar thank you Ashok